actually like to kick off with a question to, to Deirdre. So obviously you've done a lot of amazing work, I'd say, uh, in the past year and two. Uh, what, any thoughts on what brought the company to actually dive off the cliff? How come they didn't do it earlier? How come it happened now? I think it, it was quite timely in that the, I guess I look at the archives as two phases. And the first phase, the archive began very humbly, you know, right from humble beginnings. It was just one person, and it was really just in his spare time that he began to collect the material and travel all around the country. So the focus for many years was acquiring this information, but also doing um, oral history projects. And then over, over time then, um, there was a natural progression, I think, with the retirement of the people that had worked there. And um, I think the company, ESB as a company has always done the right thing and it just very much wanted to give back to the general public because there is that real sense in Ireland that the story of ESB is the story of Irish people as well. So I think the, the company just realised that, you know, it was time to give back to our customers and I think just like any innovation or any project, I think timing is key yep. and um, they, they just took you know what, what could have been seen as possibly the end of the archive with you know the staff who were really dedicated to it retiring they could have closed it um, but I think they took that opportunity to bring in professional archivists to leverage the archive wonderful and obviously you've been working with media and, and getting the, the books out and the media coverage which brings me over to, to Frederick and working with Volvo, for instance. So how do you balance the importance of getting a, a corporate history, which is part of our cultural history, into the uh, media limelight as well, while you're still at the same time analyzing and supposed to be observing critically the companies? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, my experience is that uh, those uh, you know, legacy old companies, they are very aware of that you know, balance between uh, being on the on one hand investigated by by journalists and and, uh, and covered, and on the other hand sharing their stories, and I would say that that's not that's not really the case on on more modern companies. You you mentioned uh, Spotify before, uh, and we also have a hard time, you know, getting into their stories and the, the history of, of Spotify or, or more modern modern digital companies. They seem to be more isolated, not willing to share. Uh, and more afraid of media uh, coverage, uh, and so, so that's that's our knowledge. But but when it comes to you know Volvo, IKEA, IKEA was mentioned before, uh, that is uh, in some sense more professional in that sense that they 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 they. they they are eager to share the story, the history of, of the company, and, and, and they also know the balance between you know, investigative journalism more or whatever. So that, that's, that's something that we are struggling with. Yep. And Lars, working with intermediaries, you said you are the source, the raw source material, and other people can refine it. Are companies coming to, to you? You've worked obviously with SVD. Are other companies coming to you? Obviously, uh, we collect everything printed or distributed digitally in Sweden or in Swedish language due to legal deposits. So if companies don't come to us, their materials uh, is coming to us uh, more or less automatically. That's a very um, pleasant position. <laughs> uh, so we uh, keep a lot of uh, um, annual reports, posters, uh, everything printed or everything distributed digitally that uh, has been born or, or distributed by a Swedish company. Uh, we have had a, a more, more active collaboration with, with Svenska Dagbladet, with Dagens Nyheter, your, your comp uh, the, 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 the other major Swedish <laughs> daily newspaper. Uh, we are discussing uh, similar digitization projects with a lot of, of uh, uh, local or original newspapers. The problem is the lack of funding, of course. We know, all know, know how, how, how well-funded or, or, or uh, not so well-funded uh, the press is today. 
So uh, we are also in, in the, this uh, um, track of, of digitization of, of newspapers, discussing with, with uh, research funders, with even with the government, actually. Yeah. Wonderful. Questions? Yuko. I'd like to ask the other that um, you told us that you used open soft, uh, open source soft software and mentioned uh, Google Map, but I feel that some uh, private companies they don't want to use open source software like ATM or, or Omeka. So I'd like to know more, a little bit more about how you can use decided to use open source software in order to, for your, you know, archival exhibition and things like that, or digitization? Because we were a new team, um, it was really speed was of the essence, and we were very fortunate in our team that Brian had an IT background. Um, he was very f familiar with open source technology, and he basically went to IT, and he showed them the benefits of using open source technology. He put any fears that they had at bay, um, but also it was very much the cost. It was such a minimum cost, so it actually didn't require an investment by the company. But for us as a new team, we really wanted to show how we could get our stories out there quickly and effectively, and we were very lucky that there was a lot of material digitized. Um, so. Once you get the buy-in from your IT teams, there, there really wasn't a problem. I'll skip in with a question about copyright, because we've all touched on copyright in various ways, uh, and sharing corporate stories. You come up across issues of who owns the copyright to this picture, to this document, to this old ad. So reflections on how you've dealt with that. Did you have clearance for all the pictures? Yeah, we're really fortunate in our archives. Um, particularly with our advertising collection, with a lot of business archives, um, the copyright belongs to the agencies over the years. But within ESB, um, copyright always belonged, and we have the, the paperwork to back it up, it always belonged to ESB. We directly employed our own copywriters and our own artists. So there was no issues for us whatsoever. And we also own our photographs. Um, Part of our collection, our, our first major project was the Shannon scheme, and those photographs, a lot of them, they belong with to Siemens, who were the project managers of the scheme. But a heritage agreement was put in place with Siemens that we could share um, their images. So for us, luckily, it's no problem. For the images that come in through our blogs, um, we obviously don't own the copyright of them but we ask the permission of the person who is providing us with the copies, and once they're happy to give us permission, um, we will then release it on our blog. A clear copyright trail is, mm. would be great for everything, but yeah. we, we know we're not that fortunate. How do you think about that at the, at the library? Uh, well, actually, um, I think there are two ways to deal with the problem, or, or the challenge of copyright. Uh, one way is to tweak on the legislation uh, to provide access at least for researchers to, uh, to, to um, analyze or uh, have access to our, our collections on, uh, in a digital form on the net. The other way is to license the material. And we are very pragmatic to the solution. We are, for the moment, in the discussion with, with um, our, our minister, the Minister of Education, about a new uh, Legal Deposit Act in Sweden. And this is a very fundamental aspect of, of legal deposit in the future, because legal deposit in a digital form also has to cover uh, the question of accessibility to the material. It's not enough just to collect the material. Uh, we are also, uh, for the moment, uh, in the process of negotiations with the copyright holders on licensing uh, some of the uh, newspaper material. And digitizing all of SVD, did you have, how did you clear old texts? Yeah, that was a bit of a, when Lars was talking about funding, I mean, that was, there's one way uh, you, you need to fund the, the, the digitalization of the archive on one hand, on the other hand, you have to solve the, the uh, uh, copyright questions. And in Sweden, we have the rule around 70 years 
so uh, if, we, if, if, if we weren't to solve it, then we would have a gap in 70 years of, of you know, newspapers that we can't you know, make as accessible for the, for the audience. So we, uh, we, we made a deal with the Copyright Association, uh, which was quite expensive for us. Uh, but on the other hand, if we couldn't show all the, all the you know, 133 years of, of, of newspapers, then it would, you know, the value of the archi archive would be you know, really low. So uh, that was something that we that we negotiated with them and, and made a deal. So so now it's 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 clear everything, all both the pictures and the and the uh, articles. Question over there. Yes, thank you. I, I would like again to raise the question about uh, data, uh, person personal data protection, something what it's called, because I think it's a much bigger issue than the copyright issue. And for instance, the nice pictures you showed of the workers from this site they were building, according to Danish legislation, I would not be allowed to, to, uh, to broadcast or what you call it, such a picture um, without permission from the workers. Uh, so I, I would like to ask, have you had any issues uh, regarding people who uh, complained about your launching pictures where you can see their faces on internet or whatever? Personal integrity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For us, we haven't, um, and I, we are careful in what we release. Uh, you know, it's. Oh, oh yes, I take your point that it is photographs. People can be identified in them, um, but I guess we're coming very much from a historical angle, and I, from the feedback that we have gotten already, um, people are just so proud. The relatives, they're actually so proud because they may not have seen this photo before. Um, but certainly it hasn't been an issue yet. Um, I hope it, it won't be an issue. At the moment it has just all been very positive. But we are very careful in what we release. Like for example, with our internal publications, um, there are articles on you know past employees, but that actually was a public records, they were published in our national libraries as well, but they would give more personal data on the employees, such as their marital status, who their mother, who their father was, but we don't release that particular information on our website. So at the, we just focus on the photographs, and as I say, it has all just been positive for now. Hopefully we'll remain positive. Any other thoughts on personal integrity? No? Um, just say we haven't uh, really uh, experienced any such cases so far, uh, but I can also say that I, I really share your 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 uh, your fear about uh, the consequences of the new European legislation that is currently under uh, implementation into Swedish law, and that's going to be very thrilling uh, for libraries and archives. One of the things that we have uh, discussed a lot around the ethical principles around old stories that actually being claimed in some way that that they've been uh, um, you know there could be a story published in the 1930s or the 1940s that actually where, where somewhere was one of the uh, people interviewed uh, um, took Svenska Dagbladet to court sued us uh, there are different stories in history and that they're out there now they're searchable and the people that are you know written about in, in those stories they could be easily accessible and uh, that's the ethical uh, backside of, of, you know, making a, an archive public uh, that, you know, earlier publishers before me made decisions that I now have to, you know, face. Uh, and and uh, so we, what we're trying to do in, in, in a minor way is that every story that we know about that has been claimed in, in the uh, Swedish Press Ethical uh, Board of Authorities, uh, that we try to mark it on, in the archive saying that this was claimed uh, for, for these reasons, but we still have it on the, in the archive just to make it transparent. Uh, but it's, you know, that's, that's something that's been widely discussed. Mm. I think as archivists it's something that we're very conscious of as well, because I know I mentioned that we have on our website, you know, we've extracted from original files, but like there are, there are part of those files um, that we've utilized on our website, we have just, we haven't included the personal information, like we'll say such such a customer, they will name the customer, 
wouldn't sign up or they were cranky actually. But that's the type of information we just don't release, you know, so that's why we have just extracted from the files. So something that we are very aware of, but I think that's why it's so important though that this really shows I think the professionalism of archivists as well is that we are all about, you know, data protection but also protecting our brand as well. What's interesting is you're almost making editorial decisions at the same level as a media house. A last question. Any last before we break for lunch? One. Thank you. Gabriela Massaglia from EABH. I have a question for Frederick. I was wondering whether you can say something more about the age of the persons who use this project in order to find out informa information about the family history. And in the, if yes, if younger generations use this kind of project. And Thank you. I think that story that I shared uh, uh, around the uh, woman who found the, the uh, story of her parents' wedding, uh, I, I, I would imagine that she was uh, a bit older, around her 50s or 60s or something like that. But, but we can also see that it's used in schools, and we are making it public uh, accessible for, for, for school who, who, who gets a login. Uh, and a username to use it, as uh, you know, in, in the, in the uh, uh, work of, you know, f for instance, Second World War or history projects that they're having it. Uh, so, so it's definitely used also by the young generation. Great. Thank you so much to our panel.